front of the I church. Okay, I think we are ready to get started. Welcome to the regular meeting of the Oroville City Elementary School District Board of Trustees. I'll call the meeting to order at 509. And thank you for your patience while we went through those technical difficulties. <clears throat> I'll start with roll call. Lisa Torres. Here. Jessica Anthony. Present. Sandra Barnes. Here. Bill Legrone. Here. And Dr. Holtum is out tonight. All right, so we'll start with item three, closed session, public comment on closed session items. The board will extend an invitation to interested parties who wish to speak on items that are listed on the closed session agenda. For those attending remotely who wish to comment, use the raise your hand button to be called on to speak. Comments will be limited to three minutes per person and 20 minutes per subject. Is there anyone in the public who would like to comment on closed session items at this time? Okay, and do we have any raised hands online? It does not appear to be so. Excuse me. No. Okay, and Troy, are you aware if we received any emails in Backpack? Not for closed session. Okay, so at this time we will recess into closed session and return when we are done. Thank
right. Well, welcome everyone. We will uh, reconvene into open session at 544. And I appreciate the public's response coming to our meeting. Um, and thank you all for being here. We, in light of having so many um, members in the audience who I believe are here to speak on a particular item, we've uh, decided to move the uh, agenda item around so that we have agenda item 10A move to the first item instead of having to wait until later on in the session. So we will now be speaking, but moving on to item 10, new business approved notice of violation against Stream Charter School. Before we get to that, I will say we can have public comment. In a moment. I'm sorry. No, we're going to do that afterwards. Oh, but the, we have students. Actually, we were going to move everything until after item 10, but we do have students here also for the Pledge of Allegiance. So we would like to start with our Pledge of Allegiance to be respectful of our young students who are here and giving up their time as well on a school night. So please welcome um, students from Stanford Avenue Elementary School who will read the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you for inviting us to lead your meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. We are students from Stanford School. My name is Penny. Saying the Pledge of Allegiance helps form a connection to our country. The United States of America, when we say the Pledge of Allegiance, we honor the flag and everything it represents. My name is Claire. We are a country with a diverse population. population. Saying the Pledge of Allegiance insists of a sense of patriotism for all people. My name is Aaliyah. We we say the Pledge of Allegiance to start our day at school to begin official meetings or ceremonies, and we honor the flag at special events like ball games. We would like to lead you in the Pledge of Allegiance. We stand, salute, no, not yet, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much for coming and spending your time and leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. We do have some certificates of appreciation for Claire, Penny, and Aaliyah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. And Penny? Yeah. yeah. By default, right? There you go. <laughs> nice work. Thank you, Penny. Thank you. 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 Thank so again, we will be readjusting our agenda. So we will um, begin our agenda with item 10A on uh, page eight, which is new business approved notice of violation against Stream Charter School. And I wanna give the public an opportunity to speak on public comments on action items. So the board will extend an invitation to interested parties who we wish to speak on items that are listed on the agenda. For those attending remotely who wish to comment, use the raise your hand button to be called on to speak. The Brown Act does not allow the governing board to discuss or take action on any item that is not on the posted agenda. Comments will be limited to three minutes per person and 20 minutes per subject. So we do have a lot of people here. So we, um, do need to limit the item per subject to 20 minutes total. That would be a maximum of three minutes per person. That doesn't give a lot of people. So if you want to get more people in, maybe we could try and keep the, the comments as, as succinct as possible. But I would like to invite um, somebody to come forward and speak if you would like to on an action item on the agenda. Please um, state your name clearly for the record first. Uh, Timothy Huber. Uh, good evening, board members. Um, Assistant Superintendent Cox. My name is, uh, I am Dr. Tim Huber. I work at Orville Hospital. Um, I am the vice chair of the Stream Charter School. I've lived in Orville since 2005. We moved up here after I separated from the uh, Navy after nearly 10 years. Uh, I do work at Orville Hospital, as I said, and I've been the medical director for the Butte College Paramedic Program. I volunteered in Orville Hospital and in Butte County. Um, I'm here to urge the board not to authorize a notice of violation 
uh, that the staff and the legal counsel have prepared. Stream has an active and has been an active and reliable partner uh, to the district for nearly a decade. Uh, the draconian process that they are asking you to commence will be both scary and distracting for the local community that we both serve. A uh, notice of violation is the first legal step in the revocation of the school's charter, and it's the most serious action a, char a chartering authority can take, which is to close down a charter school. Consequently, it should be reserved for generally troubling acts or omissions. If the board votes to approve issuing the notice, it will have completed just one of three steps to that culminate in the revocation of the charter and the closure of STREAM. Now, STREAM had no advance warning from the district that they had any concern whatsoever about employee qualifications. There was no inquiry by phone, none by email, uh, no notice of concern, no notice of cure. There was no attempt to follow the dispute resolution procedures in the approved charter on page 134 that are detailed and specific. And they were also approved by, uh, uh, by your board. There was no process whatsoever leading up to this notice of violation. Now, STREAM will respond comprehensively to the alleged violations, and suffice it to say for now, um, we are confident that the employee qualifications are all in process of completion, and unfortunately, we're actually waiting for state-level bureaucracy to re finish reviewing paperwork. Uh, we ask tonight for your understanding, because we have many systems, there are many systems and processes that are simply not in our control. Now, issuing a notice of violation tonight would be stunningly disproportionate <laughs> to the alleged violations, much more appropriate would be a timeline for compliance. And I really do fail to understand how taking away educational choice from more than 475 students, nearly 45% of which are socially and economically disadvantaged is in the best interest of those students. Uh, to the contrary, stream students would be then forced into lower performing educational options. Please exercise reason tonight, and please stop this rev revocation process before it gets started. And please vote against issuing this notice of violation. My name is Tim Huber, and I very much appreciate your time. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, yeah, evening. <laughs> Good evening, Madam Chair. Um, I have a statement that I received from uh, Councilwoman Janet Goodson. She asked me to uh, share it tonight, if you would be so kind. Uh, good evening uh, to the Madam Chair and the Orville Elementary School Board of Trustees. I was asked to read this correspondence submitted on behalf of Councilwoman Janet Goodson, who is on vacation as we meet. Her statement is as follows. Uh, it has been brought to my attention by several concerned community members and parents of students who attend the stream charter school that the leadership status at the school is uh, uh, petitioning a potential status change due to the educational code violation, which calls uh, to question the credentials of the current principal, Devin Thomas. It is my understanding that prior to the retirement of former principal Don Phillips, the Dean of Stream, Devin Thomas was an impressive successor and the transition was not questioned. Mr. Devin Thompson is a, Thomas is a highly uh, qualified administrator and equipped to take the reins of the role of principal and to continue the professional legacy that has been solidly built by Mr. Phillips with Devin Thomas working along his side. It is my understanding that Mr. Thomas's educational career has spanned well over 25 years, and he has held multiple positions, including that of principal and the dean of students. It is important for the board, uh, for the parents, and for the community to know that because of the of the quality of leadership in the in place at Stream for the past decade, the educational standards that have been achieved. Uh, uh, of leaders that have been achieved candidly outweighs the statistics of any other school within the Oroville Elementary School District. I would encourage, strongly encourage the board to allow Mr. Devin Thomas to remain at the helm uh, of this sound institution of higher learning where the rate of success of the students at Stream stands at 60%. Mr. Thomas had made a tremendous uh, uh, investment in this community uh, and in this school and in the individual lives of each student allow him to remain in this position as principal as he continues to complete his credentials and take stream to the next le le uh, level. I submit to you from 
Janet Goodson, Councilwoman for the City of Warville. And I think I have about 10 seconds left. And I, too, once again, my name is Pastor Kevin Thompson. And we thank you for this forum and space. And we, too, uh, with everything else that's taking place in our community, uh, uh, this is not a time to, you know, go into the weeds. Our children's uh, life, their education is at stake. And I just submit to you tonight, please, whatever you do, let's not move forward with this petition. Thank you for this time. Sir. Please state your name. My name is Ashley Legrone. Um, I have three children at Stream Charter and hopefully a TK student in the upcoming year. We have been with Stream for the last five years and I couldn't be more pleased with the school and their staff. My oldest son originally was with the Oroville District and attended um, an Oroville District school from kindergarten through third grade. Not only was it an absolutely horrific experience for myself and my child, at only third grade, he hated school, lost his passion for learning and felt like everybody was against him. He completely shut down and didn't feel comfortable speaking to school staff Staff, which led them to calling the police because he asked for me instead of talking to them. It was absolutely traumatizing for him, and even the officer admitted to the school's wrongdoing and did everything to make my son feel better. He would often come home and say that nobody liked him and that he was always in trouble, when in reality he had no clue what he was being taught and no one would listen to him when he expressed concern. He had simply given up because he was so lost and because of the administrators at that time and their policy, my son was simply labeled as a problem child and the school staff and administrators would no longer listen to him or myself. We were both defeated. I requested an, a year after year an evaluation for him to have an IEP. After one evaluation, they told me he didn't need it. Even after submitting documentation from his pediatrician in Far Northern that he needed an IEP for academic success, they still turned my request down. After multiple discussions with the head of the Department for Special Education, I was told my son would never have an IEP and that it was pointless to keep trying. Moving forward to fourth grade, I was able to get my son into stream. Not only did the teacher recommend that he be evaluated for an IEP within the first few weeks of school, my son was happy again. Within the first six weeks of school, he was coming home and telling us that he was at a school where he act, where they actually liked him and would listen to him. He felt validated and heard, and they listened to his concerns and struggles and went above and beyond to help not only um, to help him not only feel confident in himself, but get all of the support that he needed. My son did, in fact, qualify for the IEP, and he's thriving with that plan in place now. Stream has truly saved my son's education as well as his love for school. And to be completely transparent and honest, I would homeschool my children before I ever put them in another Oroville District school. And that statement right there should speak for itself. I will never be able to thank Stream enough for giving my son a fresh start and believing in him. They've helped bring his self-confidence back, and I'm so thankful that he feels comfortable advocating for himself. I now, or I have two out of my three children have IEPs with Stream, and both of their IEPs are being held up exactly as they should be, and both of my children are thriving, all three of them. Um, every single staff member that I have worked with and or met at Stream truly love my children and all of the children. They are so compassionate and caring, and they want what is the absolute best for all of the children. From in the classroom to on campus to distance learning and in the community, they are the absolute best people and educators Oroville has. I believe that Stream having higher test scores and providing more academic outlets proves that staff and teachers are more than qualified to be in their position. Stream offers more educational and extracurricular op opportunities than any other school in our town, and I believe that both are very important for our youth, keeping them busy and engaged in positive activities. I stand 100% um, with our school, and I'm confident in their abilities, um, and I honestly don't know where we would be at without Stream. Um, I owe them for everything that they've done for my family, especially Hi. my oldest, and just appreciate them. So thank you. Hello, my name is Jordan Wood. I'm a mother of three students at a 10 stream charter school, grades 8th, 4th, and TK. My older two children have attended Orville Elementary School District from kindergarten up till now. I removed my oldest from Ishii Middle School before her 7th grade year, and last year removed my middle daughter before her 4th grade year. 
My oldest daughter has a hearing loss and requires a 504 plan. She was drowning at issue. Her needs were not being met and she struggled tremendously. My middle daughter was a victim of ongoing bullying her entire third grade year that was never resolved and caused her stress and anxiety and it interfered with her ability to learn. In addition to that, it affected her overall mental well-being. In just one year at Stream, both of my daughters have experienced growth and success. They have made honorable as well as perfect attendance. They love their teachers and feel that the administrators and educators at Stream care for them and their needs as well. In addition to honor roll and perfect attendance awards, the teachers and administration administrators also have awards for character qualities such as integrity, respect, helpfulness, and kindness. These are the kinds of qualities and values that these educators and administrators are instilling into our children. I believe the truest measurement of success in an educational program is not in the numbers of degrees that the administrators hold, but rather in the successful outcome of the students who are being taught under their leadership. The advantages of STREAM Charter School's educational program and its success proven to in test scores is evidenced by the fact that parents are willing to put their children on a wait list to attend. It is our hope that the district boards share the same goal in providing the best education for our entire community's children and that they would be supportive of the teachers and administrators at STREAM. Thank you for your time. Thank you. My name is Carly Worley. Um, I have worked at Stream since the first of its of year of operation. Sorry, I'm trying to say this without getting emotional. <clears throat> when I heard of this meeting, I was extremely disappointed. Stream has proven to be an effective school from the standardized test scores to student behavior and overall school culture. As an individual who grew up in Orville, I have often heard of the negative climate <clears throat> surrounding schools and education in general. What stings in this case is that you in the education profession are choosing to go after others who desire to enhance student engagement and learning. I'm sure you can attest that this school has been an educational light in our community. Therefore, the question must be asked, what is the motive? Mr. Cox, you yourself commented when you first toured our campus. How do you have better scores than any other school in town? As you were leaving that morning after seeing what we do, you said, I can see why you have better scores. You all could be working together to enhance the educational and social standards of students in Orville, yet you attempt to discredit those who are doing these things successfully. Would it not be better for you to speak directly with specific individuals in our board as our charter outlines on page 134 if there were concerns rather than to do this publicly? In conclusion, I must say that our admin are not only great and competent educators, but they are assets to our community at large. I also assure you that if they <clears throat> worked for any other school in this district, you students and parents alike would be honored to have them. Thank you. My name is Ricky Romero, and today I bring you a tale of two schools within the Oroville School District, an unsettling chapter at Wyandotte Academy, and a transformative experience at Stream Charter School. Let me delve into the harrowing experience my nine-year-old son faced at Wyandotte. Incidents of harassment and assault were met with inadequate responses. He was groped, his genitals were grabbed, and his pants were pulled down by the same student within the confines of his own classroom. The principal even witnessed one of these atrocities. Our pleas for intervention were met with promises that the situation would be rectified. However, the school failed to deliver on that promise. Instead of addressing the issue, my son was subjected to an investigation that dismissed his truth as lies. He was then expected to return to class alongside his assailant and the teacher who labeled him a liar. When I saw a resolution for my son's safety, the proposed solution was to remove him from the school altogether. Imagine that. The victim punished and the bully left untouched, free to continue harm. The teacher failed him, the principal failed him, the school failed him, and the resource officer failed him. Now let me shift this narrative to Stream Charter School, where my son has found solace and success. Since his enrollment, his enthusiasm for school has soared. Academic achievements, including making the honor roll, reflect a transformation that was unimaginable at Wyandotte. Stream has provided an environment where my son can thrive, shining in ways I believe no other school in Oroville could facilitate. 
Crucially, the contrast in safety and trust is profound. Unlike Wyandotte, where my son was criticized, ostracized, and ultimately pushed out, Stream has become a haven. He feels safer, trusts his teachers and staff, and is no longer burdened by the fear that haunted his days at Wyandotte. As we discuss the importance of schools in shaping our children's lives, I want to bring attention to the recent developments regarding Stream Charter School. A beacon of education for over 10 years, Stream has consistently exceeded the California state average in academic achievement, yet it faces a challenge, a technicality brought to light by the Oroville Elementary School District. The supposed flaw questions Stream's ability to educate students. This technicality should not overshadow the incredible work Stream has done for our children. It's a statement to the school's commitment to providing a nurturing environment for academic growth and personal development. In conclusion, I stand here not only for my son, but for every child who deserves a safe and supportive educational environment. Contrast between Wyandotte and Stream speaks volumes, and I urge the school board to consider the profound difference a school can make in a child's life. Our children deserve better, and it, it is our collective responsibility to ensure they receive it. As Stream faces scrutiny, I implore you to recognize the silliness of this technicality and focus on the essential, the incredible impact Stream has on its students. Can we get your name, please? Jim Romero, thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Hello, I'm Cecily Myers. And as I was trying to figure out what to say tonight, I thought of a hundred different things that I could say. Sorry, she got me emotional. Um, ooh, okay. But the main point of this is the kids. What do we as parents want for our kids? What can we do to ensure our kids turn out the best people? Honest, hardworking, empathetic, responsible, and have integrity, self-motivated, happy, loving adults. Whew, that do good in the world. All Aspect Stream awards these kids for doing and being every day. Education is extremely important. It is the core building block for these children. When people told us that Stream was amazing, I thought, yeah, okay, it's a school. How different can it really be? But then we got in. The atmosphere was totally different. The kids, staff, teachers, everything was a positive, eye-opening experience at the drastic difference that the different schools in this town are. As important as education is, STREAM addresses each and every aspect I mentioned. So not only will these kids grow up to be smart, they will grow up to be well-rounded, good human beings. My kids are safe at STREAM. Their teachers and staff truly care about the kids and the whole person that they are creating. Our job as parents is to give our kids the best opportunities and experiences for our kids. We only get a few short years to shape them to be all that they can be. Stream gives the kids the best education, their test scores have proven that, the best experiences and opportunities to explore, learn, and grow in both education and in life. When my kids started Stream, they suddenly loved going to school. They hated missing for any reason, even when they were sick. They love tech and engineering time, music, PE, and all the hands-on learning that they get to do on a daily basis. Most of all, they love their teachers and the staff. They truly care about each kid and go above and beyond to help each child succeed. Within the first few days, my son was teaching the class how to do a math problem in front of everyone. My kids have blossomed both educationally and personally, went from hating school, struggling to loving school and on a roll. Stream has far exceeded what people told me and my expectations were. The same parents who were causing these issues and brought this issue to light are the same exact parents who told us how amazing the school was. So I pray that you hear all of us tonight speaking and work with Stream and not against it. My name is uh, Ryan Rayom. Um, thank you for listening to our concerns tonight. Um, I have three children that have all gone to Stream Charter School, and um, as of next June, all three of them will have graduated. Um, I'm a physician assistant um, at Warble Hospital. I've worked at the emergency room since 2014, and for the last five years, I've worked at the Butte County Jail as well as the juvenile hall. And so on a daily basis, I see what happens to children um, who do not have the support that they need growing up. I see those consequences played out at the jail and at the juvenile hall on a daily basis. And I think it would be a grave mistake to even hint at taking away one of the main supports in our town. Thank you.
My name is Renee Lee Lozano. I'm a, a mother of a child who goes to stream. Um, when I decided to speak here tonight, I wondered what I could possibly say that could make a big enough impact to stress the importance of just how much I love and appreciate what stream has done for my child. And I'm afraid that no matter what we say, you've already made up your mind and that it won't matter. However, I will do my best to convey the absolute blessing that this school has been for me as a mother. First and foremost, I do not worry about my child while she is at school. I don't fear for her safety or even wonder if she's missing home because every morning she wakes up excited to go to school. Many kids today do not enjoy school, so I think it's pretty telling that mine wants to go. Second, Stream offers a variety of extracurriculars, such as music and tech that my child thoroughly enjoys, as well as the incentives to promote a love for learning and rewards for completing academic achievements that the school has set. For example, they get lunch with the principal when they've read one million words. And lastly, I would like to show my appreciation for the teachers that I have been blessed to have. My child was in Mrs. Coleman's first grade class, and this year she has Mrs. Bosman for second grade. And I can't even compliment these two women enough because they have been so amazing. They are absolutely the gold standard when it comes to everything that teaching entails. So with all of this said, I'd like to say that I don't believe that we're here to debate whether STREAM is capable of educating our students, because there is no debate. STREAM has consistently proven that students here meet and or exceed California state standards. So my concern is, is that STREAM is not being targeted for what it's done incorrectly, but for what they've done time and time again the, correctly. And that scares the board because year after year, public school kids are flocking to STREAM due to its wonderful reputation. Thank you. Good evening to my former employers. My name is Kim Teets. I'm currently teaching kindergarten for STREAM. Um, I'd like to thank this district for helping to raise and shape me into the educator I am today. After student teaching for the district, I enjoyed 25 years with OCSD before accepting an invitation to teach at STREAM. I remember when STREAM was a dream of educators who inspired me. I remember when STREAM was a concern for the future stability for the district. I remember when STREAM became a reality and the positive response from the community because of the innovative experience the new school offered. I remember feeling like a traitor when I submitted my letter of resignation and still feel guilty for not sharing pieces of STREAM's success that could improve programs I was a part of for OCSD. The culture at STREAM and the programs in place are exemplary and don't go unnoticed by visitors, including OCESD cabinet members. I wish OCESD didn't view STREAM as a threat, but instead as an experiment that has had positive results. The results from this model could benefit the greater educational community of Oroville. STREAM has been a good option for the families in this town. While OCESD could benefit financially and from the engagement of STREAM families by disrupting the existence of the charter, I hope the board considers the value of choice and educational opportunities. While with OCESD, I experienced 10 different principals. While all 10 had the required certifications, they were not all leaders with visions. The visionaries at STREAM building the cathedral are more than qualified to achieve greatness for this community and revoking this charter or taking steps to do so would be a big mistake. And thank you for allowing me to speak with you today. I am grateful for the time and hard work that you members give to our community, teachers and our students. I have had the opportunity to personally benefit from your hard work I have five children. My four oldest children went through the Orville City Elementary School program, starting at Stanford and then three of them graduating from Ishii Middle School. I will forever be grateful for, my, for the village who helped me to raise my children. I volunteered over 18 years of my time in the local elementary schools alongside several of the most amazing teachers that our town has. A little over 10 years ago, there was talk of a charter school being started. My daughters were in third grade my son in fifth, and another daughter in kindergarten at Stanford Avenue. The charter school would be providing further education opportunities for our children. There was suddenly a new buzz. You would remember it if you were there in our town. 
The new school called Stream was offering programs such as an art class and music program, their very own PE teacher, iPads, enough for all the students, et cetera, et cetera. Stanford parents wanted to see our schools offer similar programs. In fact, our PTC at Stanford started a fund for music teachers who would come in once a, a music teacher who would come in once a week to divide her time with all of the classes. It was an awesome to see Orville School Standard. It was rising. We were taking initiative to compete with a new standard, one that was created by Stream Charter School. I watched Orville being lifted. It was actually a blessing to our family, and I would venture to say that it was a blessing to all Orville families because our school district, Orville Elementary School District, started to add more to compete with the new charter school, a healthy competition, may I add, because it lifted the community's reputation for schools. My experience at Stanford and ISHI was good, and I will forever be grateful for the amazing teachers, staff, and administration I was able to work alongside to help me educate my children. My husband and I wanted more for our children, so we made a decision to move our two youngest to Stream Charter School. The Orville Elementary School District offered our children a good education, but we were looking for a little bit more. I have no regrets having st our students in any of the schools, Orville Elementary School District or Stream Charter School. No school is perfect, but let us all lift where we stand, whether it be at a standard school through the Orville Elementary School District or at a stream charter school. Our community needs to lift each other instead of tearing down. I would say to the parents and teachers not satisfied with stream this, if a school is not good fit for you, then you can easily find something in the town that meets your needs. Using your negative experiences as growing opportunities will get you and your child further in life. Tearing each other down will not help us improve. That's the school district and our community. So instead of hurting the school, how about finding what meets your needs and learning from your experiences? There's absolutely no need to tear down schools if it does not meet your standard. It's time to lift, not tear down. Let us unify and do good. I have firsthand seen the good that Stream has offered. It is not, is it perfect? Nope. But this gives us an opportunity to improve just like every other school in the Orville Elementary School District. Please allow Stream to continue to grow and help us maintain a culture of kindness in education. We should all self-reflect and how you can make a change for good while lifting others around you. Thank you. Yes. Name, please, for the record. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Karen Newmark. Um, I have two students that graduated from STREAM and two students that currently attend STREAM. Um, I'm here tonight to express my sincere appreciation for the outstanding educational experience my children are receiving at STREAM Charter School. From the dedicated teaching staff to the well-rounded curriculum, every aspect of the school contributes to a positive and enriching learning environment. The commitment of the teachers and staff at STREAM to academic excellence is evident in the way they engage, inspire, and inspire the students. Their passion for teaching goes beyond the textbooks, fostering a love for learning that extends far beyond the classroom. STREAM's emphasis on a well-rounded education is commendable. The range of extracurricular activities and programs provide my children with opportunities to explore their interests and develop essential life skills. Whether in the arts, robotics, sports, or other endeavors, the school's commitment to meeting diverse talents contributes significantly to my children's growth and development. Furthermore, the effective communication between STREAM and parents creates a supportive partnership Regular updates on academic progress and the willingness to address any concerns demonstrate the school's dedication to fostering a collaborative relationship with parents. In conclusion, I am grateful for the exceptional education foundation that STREAM is providing for my children. STREAM's commitment to academic excellence combined with a well-rounded approach to education ensures that my children are well prepared for the future challenges. I wanna thank the entire staff at STREAM for creating an environment where learning is not just a task, but a fulfilling and enriching experience. There is no other option for my children than stream. The only other option would be a private school. I don't have time to homeschool and I bless those that do, but um, I will not, my children will not attend any other school but stream. Thank you. Thank you.
Good evening. My name is Marta Taylor, and um, I have a child that attends STREAM. My child went to a charter school in Chico, and when I moved to um, Oroville, there was no other option. I was not going to put her in a Oroville City Elementary School. On my research, I found STREAM. Uh, Don Phillips gave me a tour, and I fell in love with the school and the whole culture that they had with uh, their 21st century, that they wanted to raise the kids to learn everything and technology and including reading in there. When my child got finally got accepted after two years of the waiting list, she was at a kindergarten reading level attending going into second grade. Right now she's in third grade and she's finally a reading level. Thank you to Mrs. Bothman and Mrs. Moran who have been working very hard at getting her to level. She's no longer playing catch up. She's where she needs to be. They are working with her very, very hard. I have another student. Uh, she didn't make it there to the wait list. And so I'd rather make the drive to Chico than to have her in another elementary school here because there's no other than stream. So please keep stream. It's a great school and my kid's happy there and she is thriving there. Thank you. Good evening, board. My name is uh, Pastor Edward Hall, and I'm speaking and advocating on behalf of denying uh, this notice of violation to stream charter. Um, I also, as Dr. Hubbard uh, mentioned, I, I work with the Sheriff's Department. I'm their senior chaplain. I, I go out a lot. I work around our SROs, and um, I also volunteer in the, in the elementary schools to help our grandmothers and moms uh, with their children. And there's a difference when I go into the Orville Elementary Schools versus visiting Stream. And I would just like to state this because I don't want to repeat what everyone else said, but this decision should be about the children. As adults, we all should learn how to collaborate and work well with each other uh, to work out any technical issues without moving to something extreme and submitting a violation of a notice of violation. Um, and, and I'll say this too, that um, the resources and the cost and the money that was poured into this effort, to me, will be utilized more for cloning or duplicating that effort to make the Oroville Elementary Schools similar to stream where parents would want to send their children. Thank you. We've, we've, yeah, we've done extended our time on this, so I will allow two more speakers to come forward if you'd like. I appreciate that. Um, good evening. My name is Haley Moran, and I'm a third grade teacher at Stream Charter School. Uh, first of all, I really appreciate your active listening. I know a lot of people are coming up here and talking, so I appreciate you. Um, I stand up here today to express my, <clears throat> my profound gratitude for Stream. Ever since I started teaching at Stream, I've learned the true potential that a student and a teacher um, can unlock when they have a supportive atmosphere to thrive in. Um, the administration at Stream consists of people who genuinely care about their students to their core, and I can't emphasize that enough. Um, I've never worked with such innovative, driven, and selfless people as them. Um, among them, Don, Devin, Shelby, and Tang are people who have consistently put student and staff needs before their own. Um, they work endlessly to make sure parents, staff, and children work in conjunction, which I think is a very big driving force to the success of our children. Um, it's also why our school seems to be the happiest school I've ever set foot in. Our administrators are professionals, yet they're personable and they're inspiring. They've helped me learn a lot about myself and the importance of working with others as a team. Parents are valued as a part of this team. Children are encouraged as a part of this team. And teachers and admin work hard to hold the ropes that thread that all together. I'm extremely disappointed in the negativity that I have seen from members of our community who wish to see the downfall of STREAM. Um, all we have done and will continue to do is uplift and be there for parents, children, and our community. Um, someone who very much inspires me always says this, his name is Devin Thomas, uh, let's not tear each other down, but build each other up. And I think that is very true here today. Thank you for listening to me and for allowing me to take your time. I also appreciate you all for everything you do. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We can take one last person if there's one more. Okay. Thank you all for, 
for coming and for speaking. I appreciate your honesty and I hear your passion and your love and your connectivity to your school. It's, it's palpable. And I appreciate the stories that you are sharing of how important the school is to you. And I want to make, I want to state vehemently that we are not here to take away stream. I value choice in education. I think it is important that, um, that our students and our parents have options. And if you have chosen a school that works for you. Our job is to ensure that uh, we are charter authorizers. And so we need to make sure that anyone who has a charter underneath us that we approved follows their own charter that they wrote and we approved. So it was brought to our attention that it is not currently being followed. I don't, however, think this violation, notice of violation right now is the way to move forward. Hearing your stories, hearing your passion, I think that there is a more respectful way to move forward, to communicate, to work with the your leadership and your board to make sure we have a plan in place along with a timeline to make sure we're following the charter so that we can say, yes, you're following the charter. So I think board, I, I'm, op I'm open to your comments and suggestions on this, but I would suggest that we table this to a future meeting to give us time to communicate um, and uh, have stream give us time, give us stream time to come up with a plan and a timeline for what they would like to do to deal with this. Madam President, I, I agree with your analysis of the situation as it exists right now. I think that the best way forward on this is to table this until our meeting next month uh, and ask the stream uh, representatives leadership to work with our district leadership to resolve this matter come back with a plan with a timeline um, now whether that's there's an interim administrator while the uh, administrators earn the necessary credentialing whatever that is I mean work that out I think there's a multitude of solutions to this problem and you know I'm not going to try to solve it you know so if it's Bill's world it has to fit everyone so I think that working together we should probably come up with something, table this thing until next month. And then in next month, if there's no resolution and there's no willingness to work, then I guess we take the next step, which would be to issue the notice. I mean, but I think it's reasonable now to give them some time. I do believe, um, I do agree with Bill and Sharon. Um, I think the notice, um, it just comes, it's too quick. We just need to give every, everybody an opportunity to be able to get what they need. Um, we are not here to tear down, like she said, a charter school. We want to uplift and build our community and support our community. Um, we also want to do it under the laws that we're supposed to be doing it as. So um, with that being said, uh, we will, um, I know as for myself, I will not be approving the, um, the violation. Um, I feel that if we work together and we get credentials in order, uh, things would uh, be done. We have had too many distractions with our kids as far as uh, throughout the whole year. Yeah. Um, kids deserve more. And if, they, if we can't work together as a unity, then we're failing our kids. So um, with that being said, I thank all of you that came out tonight. Um, it is cold out there. You guys obviously care for our community, care for your children. We share the same passion as well. That's why we sit up here because we want to hear what you have to sit there and say mm -hmm. and is being heard. And we just want to let you know that we do understand and we do hear all of you and we do take everything that you say to heart. Um, like I said, we want to continue to work together. We want to show our kids that we can be adults and that we can work together and that everything that we do is for them. Thank you. The whole uh, reason. Oh, I'm sorry. After me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you all to uh, to those who spoke and came out. That was very brave and you know very moving and a lot of your stories. Um, I think there was a lot of misinformation being spread um, in the community about the actual purpose of this meeting. 
um, and this violation, and it is not to tear a stream down or, and it is not a, uh, there are not underlying issues of threats or financial benefits or um, ideas that, you know, can be better fit in our OCESD district. And I don't really want I want people to leave here in a unity in your own words of building each other up that there are very successful things happening on our end as well mm -hmm. we support you and we would ask for that same support on us as well um and yes I am in agreement that we would ask the school uh within a reasonable time to collectively do what the purpose of this meeting was for which was for to follow the charter that was written by stream and that's it that's simply it it's very simple and those are the facts it has nothing to do with anything else other than us overseeing what is written and following those rules so again thank you for your time for all of you who spoke i really do appreciate that and those were very moving stories and i'm very happy for the success of all of your children thank you it's the final word we're all parents up here we came here onto this board for the same reason that you guys are in this room right now. My journey started 12 years, 10 years ago, 11 years ago. Yeah, 11 years ago, uh, fighting for my students and all the other students uh, on OCASD to get wraparound services, to get adequate coverage as curriculum and we're here to support you just so much as we are here to support our own students. And we're not interested in pulling that support. We just want to make sure that you also have the support that you need. So thank you for coming out. Thank you, board, for your comments. And so I think officially we will table this item and put it on um, next month's um, agenda and hopefully have some nice conversations and some planning taking place um, before our next meeting so we can um, determine what kind of a plan of action we can take to resolve this issue without having to make official um, violation notifications. Thank you. Good days, everybody. We do have a number of other items on the agenda, but if you don't want to stay for those, you are welcome to leave now. <laughs> Thank you all again for coming. It's good to see some of you again. <laughs>
All right, so we'll move on to comment session, comments and announcements by board members. Lisa Torres. Good evening. Um, I was able to go attend the CSBA uh, conference, learned a lot. It was good. It was, it's getting bigger and bigger and had a great time. Um, got to spend a few days away from home and um, bring my husband. So we, you know, it was educational. Um, looking forward to it to, uh, again next year. Um, and I just hope that everybody just has happy holidays, happy and safe holidays as we go into the Christmas season. Um, I just want to um, just say I'm grateful for the things that I have in my life right now. Uh, my husband, my kids, my position that I have here on the board, um, our community. And I'm just grateful for all those things. And I just wish everybody a happy and safe new year. Thank you. Jessica Anthony. I wish I had the audience to spread all this good information. <laughs> <I'll report>. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some members. Thank you for yeah. staying. <laughs> good <an> audience. <laughs> okay. So uh, I've had the opportunity to spend time with some second graders who are thriving in second grade and learning about nouns and pronouns and adjectives and verbs and all of these things that I have to secretly Google. And <laughs> yes, that's right. Um, and we're making Christmas um, and holiday decorations and they are um, happy and out on the playground. And I get to spend a lot of time with these second graders having a small little 40 minute imprint that I can with them, um, and helping them learn in their learning environment. Um, and I would like to say that I'm very proud of the students at, uh, the schools that we attend for their honor roll and principal honor roll, um, positions that they've earned. And I was proud to be a part of that assembly. And then um, as well as being part of this board. And thank you, Lisa, for opening up the gratitude window and say that I'm grateful for all of you and for all of you here that came to attend and support your community. Thank you. Thank you. Sandra Burns. So I got to go to, honestly, I work for a big box retailer and I have been running for the last two weeks straight. I'm exhausted. I have two more weeks to go. And in the middle of all of this, I got to spend two of my days off, three of three of my days off with the group in San Francisco at a CSBA conference where we each took a concentration that we were interested in and we went to all the workshops that those entailed I have to decline my mother. Um, yes, I declined my mother. Um, and my concentration happened to be, I wanted to go to the ones with uh, AI, but a lot of those were closed because of so many people wanted to look at those, uh, to listen to those workshops and those lectures about uh, artificial intelligence in our schools. So instead I went to cybersecurity. Um, which detailed some basic infrastructure and some basic security measures that all school districts can take um, with regards to protecting our schools from those nefarious people that would uh, seek to do our children harm. Uh, one startling fact that I learned that I really wasn't in tune with was um, uh, those people who typically will steal social security and identities uh, from average Americans or average adults, pardon me, are actually targeting students now because it takes anywhere between eight and 10 years before anyone is the wiser. Um, so yeah, I learned a lot. So I, I'm looking forward to next year and I hope we'll be able to go. Thank you. Bill Brown. I didn't get to go nowhere. Um, <laughs> but neither here nor there. I do want to be, um, express my gratitude to and appreciation for my fellow board members, the district administration and all the parents in the community. Um, I like to announce or make people aware of some events that are occurring. Uh, one will be tomorrow. It'll be operation live on. 
Um, I keep mixing it up and calling it operation and all sorts of different things, but it is operation live on what it is. is It's an event that is going to occur in the downtown area where the OSCIA in uh, cooperation with some other community groups is uh, distributing Narlaxin, which is also AKA Narcan um, to uh, businesses and in the neighborhood. It's uh, it's an extremely and a very unfortunate thing that we need to have that available to ourselves because there are so many people that we're losing because of overdoses with fentanyl. fentanyl uh, now that it's just, unfortunately, it's a reality. It's something that you should have available. Um, it's easy to use. You're protected when you're using it. But that will be occurring tomorrow. So if anyone that is watching or um, in our audience is interested, I believe it's from 11 to 2. I mean, there was... Uh, going to be free food. Lisa's giving out gift cards. Um, I don't know if she is or not, but <laughs> we'll put her on the spot. I mean, uh, but that'll be occurring on Saturday. There's going to be a, a several different events that are occurring. Uh, one is going to be the Orville rescue mission is doing a fill the truck drive toy drive for uh, uh, children that are um, their parents or themselves are experiencing uh, homelessness or un being unhoused or just uh um, unable to afford Christmas gifts. So that will be at the uh, Orville Big Lots. I believe it's from 10 to 4. If you want to come down and purchase a gift, it will be put into the truck and then distributed to uh, families that need it over the Christmas season. Also on Saturday, there is a free spaghetti feed and a bicycle giveaway uh, at the uh, Southside Community Center. Uh, again, this is sponsored by the OSCIA. Um, and that'll be a very large event. And I have to say, Lisa, what are the hours on that? Okay, that's going to be 11 to 2, so um, I would encourage everybody to come down to that. It's not only, you know, you, you get spaghetti, potential of a bicycle, but I think you also, you know, it's a, a good way to fellowship with everyone and to uh, just come together in the holidays. So there's a lot of good uh, events going on over the weekend and over the next couple of days, and I would just encourage everybody, you know, if you're feeling like giving back to your community, you know, here's a couple of opportunities where you can do that. Step first. It'll be at the Municipal Auditorium. Thank you. Um, I would like to just reiterate my appreciation for being able to attend the um, California School Board Association Educational Conference. Um, so much valuable information is shared for board members. I also had the additional opportunity to um, represent our area as a delegate and attend earlier sessions that were about um, policy and um, advocating for our students and our educational needs. And representatives or delegates from across California came together and we spent quite a bit of our two days together advocating for the mental health of our students. And um, talking about what our schools are lacking, what's working, but what we're lacking and what kind of resources we would need to be more successful to help our students be more successful in terms of policy and funding, stable funding. And um, I am proud to be a part of an organization that can have a voice and make a substantial change in state and national policy. And so I'm hoping that our collective voices will be heard and we'll see some changes in regulation so that we can provide a additional services that we and funding that we can count on on a regular basis to better support the mental health of our students and our staff. So I am grateful for that. I also want to um, say on the gratitude, um, I am grateful for our freedom of speech and the opportunity that we have to, to advocate for ourselves and our families and our communities without fear of retribution, as we heard today. I, I value this, um, this format and I appreciate people speaking up. Um, I would also like to say um, Merry Christmas, um, Happy Hanukkah, um, a joyous Kwanzaa, and Happy New Year. And however you celebrate, I hope that this holiday season you're able to find um, joy and peace and happiness with your loved ones. Thank you. All right, well, we will move on to comments and announcements by administration. Um, Dr. Spencer Holtum is out, as well as um, Andrew James. So Troy Cox. So I do have a board report for curriculum and instruction. Uh, we did have our um, annual visit with our DOJ mediator the last three days. 
we were able to go to each site, uh, do walkthroughs, uh, witness the PBIS and um, trainings that have been taking place, how it's affecting our teachers and our instruction. We saw quite a bit of growth from the last couple of visits we've had, uh, nothing but great reviews. Um, we're seeing great growth in our classrooms as far as our social and emotional learning, our PBIS. So good things are happening and it was, it was great to witness it. Um, we've seen um, as far as the continued DOJ work, uh, we still have our uh, biweekly meetings. Uh, we also have our monthly meetings to review discipline data. Um, and we've also been attending trainings with Jennifer Garcia, who is our PBIS uh, tier two and tier three coordinator for our district that works with our ed therapists and our counselors, as well as Laura Muiman, who is our national restorative practice teacher as well. Um, our counseling group has completed the first two days of a eight, uh, seven day training for FBA. Uh, that includes our counseling, our school psychologists, and our ed therapists. Uh, Jennifer Garcia, who is our trainer for that, is the person that's providing the FBA, which is a functional behavior analysis, which helps us identify behaviors and uh, to create behavior support plans that allow us uh, to create plans that can help students that uh, need a little extra help. So it's a very good process. It'll definitely help our educators moving forward. Uh, LCAP is coming up. We will have a mid-year report in January. Uh, that will be coming up after we return from the holidays. Um, let's see. The site visits uh, have been going well this month as well. A um, lot of good things happening. Um, you know, when, when you're in a district and um, the idea of continuously improving means that we constantly are looking at what we're doing, how we can improve, and what we can do next uh, in the hopes of making sure that we're reaching uh, every student that we have and how we are uh, reaching the students that are having a difficult time. That's what we do on a constant basis. Those are the ideas that happen. So every time we do walkthroughs, every time there's feedback, there's things we can reflect on to do better. And um, the CSBA conference, I had a uh, it was a wonderful time uh, with board members and uh, Dr. Holtum as well. Uh, gained a lot of information about some attendance and uh, areas uh, also that may be able to add for our PBIS program uh, that I look forward to um, researching and see if we can bring that into the district as well. And I just want to make sure that everybody in attendance, everybody that attended tonight, everybody that is still here, our board has a happy holiday. Thank you. Thank you. And Holly Gutierrez. Well, I don't have as long as an announcement. <laughs> um, I really don't have anything to share other than I just wish everyone happy holidays and a restful, very well-earned time for all of our staff and students and families to get together and enjoy each other's presence. Thank you. All right. And now item C, comments by the public. At this time, the board will extend an invitation to interested parties who wish to speak on matters which are school related. For those attending remotely who wish to comment, use the raise your hand button to be called on to speak. Comments will be limited to three minutes per person and 20 minutes per subject. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak on, speak on anything uh, that are school related? Okay. Do we have anyone online raising hands? No. No, we don't. Okay. And any emails, Troy? Not not related to open session. No. Okay. Um, item six, annual organization meeting, a nomination and an election of board president. Is there anyone who would like to nominate someone to be board president for this next year? <laughs> Is there anyone interested in putting their name in the ring? I would be willing to uh, step up for another year if somebody were willing to nominate me. I would like to nominate Ms. Sharon Nielsen. Okay. All right. So there is a nomination. Is there, um, let's see, we need a motion to nominate me to be and elect, to be nominated and elected to the position of president of the board of trustees for the 2024 calendar year. Is there a motion? So moved. Okay. And is there a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? 
You're doing a whiz bang of a job and I appreciate your commitment. Absolutely. And your hard work. Thank you. All right. So all in favor of having me, Sharon Nelson, nominated and elected for the position of president of the Board of Trustees for the 2024 calendar year. Uh, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstain? Motion carries with five yes votes. Okay. Nomination and election of vice uh, uh, board vice president. Any uh, nominations? I would like to nominate uh, Lisa to maintain her position as vice president. Do you accept that nomination, Lisa? I do. Okay. So is there a motion to nominate and elect Lisa as vice president? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Abstain? Motion carries with five yes votes. Nomination and election of board clerk. I nominate Ms. Jessica to be a board clerk. Okay. Is there uh, a motion to nominate and elect um, Jessica as the board clerk? Does she accept? Accept. Thank you. I so moved. Okay. Is there a second? I second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstain? Motion carries with five yes votes. We're going to be sticking with the same board officers for the next year. Thank you for the work that you're doing. Right. If it ain't broke, broke don't fix it. And we will officially appoint secretary um, to the Board of Trustees, which is our um, superintendent, Dr. Holtum. So we need a motion to um, that uh, Dr. Holtum will be appointed as secretary of the Board of Trustees for the 2024 school year per his contract with the board. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Abstain? Motion carries with five yes votes. All right, now we'll move on to item E, adopt location, starting time, and schedule of board meeting for the 2024 calendar year. It's recommended that the board adopt the location, starting time, and schedule of the board meeting for the 2024 school year. The meetings will be held at the Oroville City Hall, council chambers, um, beginning at, um, can we commence at 5 p.m. as we have been? Okay, so is there a motion to approve the presented schedule of board meetings for the 2024 school year to be held beginning at 5 p.m. on the third Wednesdays of the month, except as noted as the scheduled meetings? So moved. Is there a second? A second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstain? Motion carries with five yes votes. Okay, item seven, the public hearing session. <clears throat> I actually need to recuse myself on this item. And so, Lisa, will you handle this item, please? Proposed compensation for, cert for certificated staff, effective July 1st, 2023, OETA. The Board of Trustees will receive comment from the public regarding proposed compensation for certif for certificated staff effective July 1st, 2023. The public disclosure form outlining the fiscal impact of the proposed ag agreement is attached. So, so it this is the agreement made through interest-based bargaining and OETA and the District for Compensation and Benefits in total. The agreement includes a shift in the OETA salary schedule, combining the BA plus 60 column and the BA plus 75 column into a new BA plus 60 column. This represents a 1.05% increase in salaries and was brought to the board earlier in the calendar year. A 3.5% a 3 ongoing salary increase an $83 a month increase to health benefits, effective February 1st, 2023, paid by the district, and a 2,000 one-time salary payment. Changes to loosen the eligibility requirement for retiree health benefits program, and per the OETA contract, when salaries are increased, so will the after-school stipends be increased. All of these changes are included in the first interim budget, in addition to uh, similar collective, in collective increases to all other employees as an assumption for the budget. Is 
So this is not, we don't have to vote on we this. We have any uh, co public comment on that? Right, it is a procedural. We okay. would open and then close. It, okay. We would ask for comment, and then if there's no comment, we would close. Is there any comment from the public? Letters? Any letters? No. Any? Okay. Raise hands. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing on the on. So we would just uh, close the hearing and note the time. Okay, we're gonna close at six fifty three. And then we gotta go get Sharon. Yeah, he's gonna go okay. Sharon. Do we have to go get? <laughs> <laughs> She's gotta be excused on a couple other ones too. Okay, item eight, eight action session, public comment on action items. We did do this previously for one item, but I will read it again for any other items that somebody may wish to speak on. Um, board will extend an invitation to interested parties who wish to speak on items that are listed on the agenda. For those attending remotely who wish to comment, use the raise your hand button to be called on to speak. The Brown Act does not allow the governing board to discuss or take action on any item that is not on the, uh, the posted agenda. Comments will be limited to three minutes per person and 20 minutes per subject. Is there anyone in the public that would like to speak on anything that's on the agenda? Okay, do we have anyone online raising their hands? Okay, and do we have any emails to read on this, Troy? No, we don't. Okay, great. So we will move on to the consent agenda. And again, I need to recuse myself from the approval of the consent agenda. Can I get a motion to con approve the consent agenda as stands? So moved. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Any noes? Abstained? With, five, with four yes votes. And thanks, Bill. All right, item 10, new business. A, we've already addressed and tabled. Item B is to approve the ground lease agreement for Feather Falls school site. It is recommended that the ground lease agreement between OCESD and the Feather Falls Historical Association be approved as presented for the real property owned by OCESD located at 2651 Lumpkin Road in Oroville for a sum of $1 per year, effective November 1st, 2023, and continuing through October 31st, 2043. And I just wanted to make sure, was there anybody here to speak from the Feather Fall Historical Society? Okay. I was informed there might be. Okay. So um, this is a 20-year, $1 lease for the Feather Falls Historic Association to lease the property where the Feather Falls Union Elementary School was located before it was lost in the Bear North Complex fire. The property currently has no features and has been cleared of toxic debris. The OCESD Facilities Use Committee brought this recommendation to the board prior to the fire, and this is the lease finally being delivered for approval. The Feather Falls Historical Association intends to use this site for community benefit like gatherings and pot potentially build some structures for public benefit. Feather Falls Historical Association, as part of the lease, will have to carry the insurance for the property. Thank you. Is there any discussion, questions from the board? I just have one question. If uh, if structures are built onto the property, does the structure revert back to the district at the end of the lease? If you don't know the answer, I would you just check? Follow, with, I will need to follow up. You just check that. with our council and see. I just don't want to. Absolutely. Twenty years from now, I don't want to saddle a board with all of a sudden they have to spend five hundred thousand dollars to buy structures because it reverts back to us and we get into that quagmire. If it was built on the land, it would be considered real property and therefore sold with the land. But yes, please yes. check. So should we table this check. item then? I think we should we should probably approve it just with the uh, with the question with the question just to follow up and ensure. And if it does become an issue, then bring it back to us so that we can take further action or make okay. some sort of arrangement. Nice. That was a park. Is there a motion to approve the ground lease agreement for the Feather Falls Feather Falls school site? So moved. Is there a second? Second. 
Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> Abstain? Motion carries with five yes votes. Mm -hmm. Item C is to approve the agreement with Fresno Pacific University. It is recommended that the board approve an agreement with Fresno Pacific University to provide supervised practicum or internship experiences for university students in OCASD classrooms as they work toward earning their pupil personnel services credential in the areas of school counselor, school psychologist, or behavior analyst. So this is uh, one of our, uh, we have an intern for um, one of our counseling ed therapists or um, social work positions. And in the process of them interning, there has to be an agreement uh, from the district to the university for them to be able to receive credit while they're working for us. So this is just an agreement to make sure that the university and the, the district are on the same page as far as having that person work here. And all all rules as far as HR, you know, uh, fingerprinting, all the things that go along with go along with this program as well, just like they were being hired. Okay. okay. Any discussion or questions from the board? Is there a motion to approve the agreement with Fresno Pacific University? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstain? Motion carries with five yes votes. Item D, select date for board study session. It's recommended that a Wednesday in February be selected. We choose the time and the date for the board study session. The study session will be held at the conference room at 2795 Yard Street in Oroville. There are three other February or Wednesdays in February besides our board meeting. One of those is a week there that the district is off. So that would be the week of February 14th, which would not be an option. So that leaves us with February 7th or February 21st. Is there any preference from the board? February 7th. Any other board member have comments on that? When's our other board meeting? 28th. The 28th. The 28th. Okay, the 7th is fine. Um, just to let you know, I would I will be out of town, but I can attend by Zoom. Okay, so, um, and do we want to start that at five o'clock as we don't normally do our staff or board meetings? Yeah. Okay, so is there a motion to set the board study session for 5 p.m. on February 7th? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain? Motion carries with five yes votes. Item 11, business and finance. Finance. Um, I do need to recuse myself once again. Now that we're approving some things, I think I need to go all the way through item D, A through D. So you can bring me back in on item E. <laughs> okay. Ratify tentative agreement with Oroville Elementary Teachers Association adjusted salary schedule for 2023 to 2024 school year. It is recommended that the tentative agreement with OETA regarding the adjusted salary schedule for the 2023-2024 school year be ratified as, pres as presented. Can I get a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the item as agendized based upon the information provided in the public hearing. Is there a second? A second. May I have a quick question? Sure. This is probably a question better for Spencer, but I noticed the date on this as being August. We are now in December. Why the delay? I can answer that. It would be they done. Finish the negotiation. Sorry. So and they, it goes back to the beginning of the school of the uh, fiscal oh, year. Post predated. Got it. Not posted. Predated. Got it. Copy there. Exactly. Not Spencer, Thank you. I think that's the right answer. It's absolutely the right answer. And it, it's the fiscal year would begin for teachers being right. when they start work, it would be in August. Mm -hmm. So it would backdate to August. Right. Yeah. Got it. We negotiate for the year um, yeah. that we are currently in for our contract. Any more questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any no's? Abstain? Pass with four yes votes. 
B, ratify tentative agreement with Oroville Elementary Teachers Association salary and fringe benefits for 2023 to 2024. It is recommended that a tentative agreement with the OETA regarding salary and fringe benefits for the 2023 and 2024 school year be ratified as presented. Are there any questions? Can I get a motion? So moved. Can I get a second? A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any no's? Abstained? Passed with four yes votes. C, approve revised salary schedules. It is recommended that the revised salary schedules reflecting a 3.5% increase for certificated, for certificated nurse, substitute nurse, psychologist, and substitute psychologist be approved effective July 1st, 2023. Are there any questions? Can I get a motion? So moved. Can I get a second? A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any no's? Abstained? Passed with four votes, four yes votes. And I believe she said approved after school stipend pay voucher for 2023 to 2024. It is recommended that the after school stipends pay voucher be approved as presented. Any questions? Can I get a motion? So moved. Can I get a second? A second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any no's? Abstained? Passed with four yes votes. Approved first interim report for the 2023 to 2004 fiscal year. It is recommended that the first interim financial report. Oh, that's you. Can you be here? Yep. Okay. Uh, I didn't mean <laughs> <laughs> I was on a roll. <laughs> uh, approved first interim report of the 23-24 fiscal year. Um, and I believe that Troy has a report on that. Yeah, the first interim budget is uh, mostly described in the letter and documentation provided. There are a few important topics the board needs to know. The salary and benefit increases for OETA and the rest of OCESD are included in the first interim budget. So all of those that we just uh, voted on are included. The first interim budget is a positive budget showing OCSD is able to meet its financial obligations in all three years demonstrated. So a positive certification so far, that's great. Uh, the budget shows the impact of the decline in enrollment after the COVID hold harmless years. In year two and year three of the multi-year projection, you can see that the amount of LCFF Local control funding formula revenues from the state actually decreased each of those years due to the overall decline in enrollment over the years. This budget represents the state adopted budget. There has been an economic downturn, but it is too early to determine what those impacts might be to demonstrate to the board. The administration has already begun discussing short term and long term strategies for reducing deficit spending and maintaining adequate reserves should cuts to the state budget revenue begin to happen. Any questions or discussion from the board? All right. Is there a motion to approve the first interim report for the 23-24 fiscal year? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstain? Motion carries with five yes votes. And with that, we will adjourn the meeting at 7.07. Thank you. Thank you all.